A new Cold War is looming on the horizon, but this time Western democracies do not find themselves at odds with the Russians, but instead they find themselves at odds with the People's Republic of China. The history between Hong Kong, China, and the West is extremely confusing and dates back centuries. But to understand the most recent series of events, it's really important to look back to 2019. In 2019, China introduced a national security law, which effectively would change Hong Kong's relationship with Beijing. One of the main components of the bill was that Hong Kong citizens could be extradited to Beijing to face trial. This was contentious because the Beijing government has implemented a series of laws and procedures which are rather arbitrarily drawn. So Hong Kong citizens fear that they can face improper and uh, unfair treatment in the Chinese legal system. One in seven Hong Kong residents ended up protesting the bill, and in fact, most of the West responded in just a similar fashion. In the United States, Congress implemented the Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act, and the president, via his State Department, issued a number of sanctions and censures against the Beijing government. The national security law ended up getting passed in 2020, and it still faces condemnation today from the Biden Secretary of State. Fast forward to this year, and again, China is making another series of drastic changes to Hong Kong law. But this time, it's not a national security law, it's an election reform law. What this effectively did was take power from Hong Kong and gave it to Beijing. Beijing implemented a series of reforms which introduced a collection of new members into a committee who would select Hong Kong's leaders. So effectively, the Hong Kong residents or the people in Hong Kong are no longer choosing their leaders. Beijing chooses, or chooses their leaders for them. This law was implemented into the National People's Congress a few days before U.S. and Chinese figures met in Anchorage, Alaska to discuss geopolitical issues. In short, the meeting was an extremely contentious one. U.S. officials and Chinese officials found zero common ground on a variety of issues. For the case of Hong Kong, the U.S. officials stated that the Chinese government was recurringly violating their human rights and their human liberties. On the Chinese side, they strictly said that the U.S. has no reason to be concerned about what's going on in Hong Kong because that falls under the Chinese government's purview or sovereignty. For the Chinese government, the issue of national sovereignty is a big one, and it really affects their policies with Hong Kong, Tibet, and Zhejiang. Because the Chinese government views that they hold or possess uh, absolute authority over these regions, in their eyes, they can do whatever they see fit to govern these regions. In response to these growing concerns about what's going on in Hong Kong, the Biden administration and Secretary of State Blinken have released a variety of condemnations and censures against people within the Chinese regime. In addition to that, for the first time in roughly four decades, the European Union also sanctioned Chinese officials. So within the West, there is a growing movement against what's going on in Hong Kong, against what's going on in Zhejiang, and against what's going on in Taiwan and Tibet. Since President Trump, relations between China and the West have grown a little bit more wary. President Trump, unlike his predecessors, was much more ad hoc against Chinese aggression and went out of his way to challenge them on economic issues, on military issues, and lastly, with the pandemic. This relationship caused strain because China had been given ultimately kind of a free pass for roughly two to three decades. So the free pass was revoked under Trump, and since Biden, China is wishing to obtain that pass once again. But as it seems, Biden is not willing to give that pass. The reason behind why he's not giving that pass is a little bit more interesting. Right before President Trump left office, his Secretary of State issued a censure and a sanction against the Chinese government for committing crimes against humanity and genocide in Zhejiang. This put the Biden administration in an interesting spot, to say the least. If Biden came in office and undid that order, he would effectively be absolving China of blame of what's going on in Zhejiang. If he doubles down on that order, then China looks at him as being an aggressor. At this point in time, Biden has chosen the path of the latter, and it seems that he will be aggressive with China, at least under his Secretary of State. After the Alaska meeting, it doesn't seem like the two sides are too friendly with one another, and they have a lot of interesting issues to unpack. And their interests don't really co-align. Their interests don't intersect. 
So between the West and between China, there is a growing concern that we are going into a new Cold War. For American citizens, this is a time in which we should not wish for us to go into actual combat against the Chinese people, but this is a period in which we need to defend that we need to defend our rights, our liberties, and our interpretations of what a society is and what a good society ought to be. For the Chinese, they do not view our system of government as an attractive one. They don't believe in civil liberties. They don't believe in rule of law. They don't believe in lowercase all republicanism. They don't believe in the ideas espoused in the Declaration of Independence or the laws within the Constitution. For them, this is about a authoritarian takeover and regaining the power that they once had in past centuries. So at this point, the relationship between the United States and China will continue to grow more adversarial, at least w under its current path. With more meetings and more summits and more conferences with the Chinese looming in the future, it is impossible to state right now that the Biden administration will continue in Trump's path. While Joe Biden doesn't necessarily have the greatest record on foreign relations, his past is littered with bad decisions about going to war or pursuing treaties or pursuing certain declarations with bad actors. However, his Secretary of State at least seems to understand the gravity of the situation his administration is involved in. Secretary of State Blinken, at least in front of the cameras, has declared that China is committing crimes against humanity, that they're committing genocide against the Uyghurs in Xinjiang, that they continue to trample democracy in Hong Kong, that they continue to impede on Taiwan's sovereignty, and they continue to occupy, occupy Tibet. So while President Joe Biden may go in front of the cameras and be friendly towards Xi Jinping, Secretary of State Blinken has gone out of his way to approach the People's Republic of China with the right sort of attitude. And that attitude is one which understands that the People's Republic of China is not here to be the friend of the West. They're here to take the role of the West and reimagine the global environment with China at the top. Tensions between the United States and the People's Republic of China are fraught with uncertainty. And looking back to the early stages of the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union, it's really clear to see how we can't predict how these situations will unfold. But at this place and at this moment in time, the Biden administration firstly needs to understand that every decision it makes comes with immense consequence. And moreover, the standard that the Biden administration sets right now won't just have an effect on U.S.-Chinese relations, but it will have an effect on how the entire world views what China is doing. I'm Brett Kershaw, and this is The Western Journal. Hey guys, did you know we have a podcast called WJ Live? The Western Journal's mission is to equip readers with the truth, and that's the same mission we have on WJ Live. You'll hear from writers, editors, and special guests on the most important topics of the day. You can catch us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern and 2 p.m. Pacific, right here at youtube.com backslash WJ Live. While you're there, help us out by subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss any future episodes. See you there.